And the Lord is already here. Hey, Linda. I guess I'm the, um, am I going to be able to hear? I don't know yet. Okay. Linda, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, good. I can hear you. This is great. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> One technical difficulty taken care of. <laughs> How are you doing today? Great. You're looking good. Well, thank you. Yesterday was a fiasco. Um, we had part one, part two, part three. We missed, we lost part four. We don't know where it went. Oh. But we sure had a lot of fun <laughs> bouncing around all over the internet. Dave is trying to get us set up now and get me in on the computer so I can see people. Well, there was one other girl on. I don't know who she was. Young, young lady. You're only seeing me. Not a regular, huh? I didn't recognize her. It's me, G. It's Jessica. Oh, hi. Oh. How are you? I'm good. Younger woman. <laughs> yeah. So how is everybody today? What's the weather like wherever you're at? It's cold. Probably 60 and starting to rain. 68 isn't bad. Yeah. <laughs> I have frost and I'm hoping it doesn't get cold enough or wet enough to snow again. Okay, hold on. Dan. It's the computer, not the TV. That's better. It's the TV. Oh. Not the computer. oh, can you mute the TV or do you have to do turn the volume down? I don't know down? what I can do with the TV yet. Oh, we're, we're working on our technical difficulties, <laughs> but we're all ready to go. Now, has have you guys read through any of the instructions or not? not? Yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> has anybody actually started? Yes. No. Okay, because there was what I found one error in the instructions. Oh, good, I can see everybody. Uh, I found, hi, Lorraine, how are you? I'm fine, it's 76 in Florida. Not bad at all. That's sunbathing weather. Yeah. <laughs> it's hunting day here. Apparently they already got three bucks, is that right? Just today. Just today. Six oh, six total, three today. So they are out. Uh, skinning deer right now it's a national pastime i guess or something anyway um we'll give a chance for people to to get here because we should have jeff should be here karen i think should be here and pat jacoby should be here at least there we go suzanne how you doing i'm good i'm good I'm mostly gonna be watching because I, I didn't buy a kit but no, oh, that's okay. You might decide you like the project. You might decide you don't like the project, but you'll at least know how to do it. Yeah. And uh, so I don't know how many people are here because it only shows six on the screen. Does it say? Um, Does anybody know how many people are here? There's just six. Participants in that include. Um, you and Calder Group. So. Okay. Two of us, Suzanne Adler, Jessica Carr, Lorraine Short, and Linda Barnum. Okay, so we don't have Jeff um, here yet. And typically on this screen, you probably should be able to see nine people at one time. Okay. And Do we want to make you big or just let it just, just speak? No, we'll just. I probably won't be watching that too much, but when somebody's speaking, I like to.
Unfortunately, yesterday on the show, I accidentally said the class was from three to five, but when you got the link, it said two o'clock. So I'm hoping everybody will pick up on that. If not, they can watch the video afterwards, I guess. So we'll give them a few more minutes. So Steph is at home working on her Christmas. Um, she finished her, her Secret Santa, but now she's working on Christmas stuff for her kids. My kids are old and don't appreciate that kind of stuff too much unless it's a quilt. And that's a lot of work. <laughs> the youngest one's already got his. The oldest one, it was a, the youngest one, it was a wedding quilt. The oldest one, I don't think, is ever going to get married. So I'm going to have to do his quilt anyway. But um, when they get to be that age, Is everybody done with all of their Christmas projects and stuff? No. <laughs> I'm working on my secret Santa. That's why I can't do the shawl. I'm almost, I'm almost uh, done with my secret Santa. So that's a good thing. But, um, well, we can go ahead and get started, I guess. We're, what, give it another minute, give it five minutes. But I, I know people are busy with the holidays and the shopping and, Hanukkah coming up, and I don't remember the dates of Hanukkah. They're kind of late this year, though, I think. Plus, they know that sometime in the next six months, they can watch us on YouTube. That's true. That's about your speed right there, huh? <laughs> okay, what I'm going to do, um, this is a really long piece of stabilizer. As you, if you've got your kit, um, you know. And if you don't have a kit, it's 96 inches long. So it won't fit on very many surfaces. So what I'm going to do is try to make it easy. I'm going to get rid of this right now because I'll use it later. So what I did was I folded my stabilizer in half the length way and I marked the middle so that I can measure out from either side and get um, make it easier to work with. So can you remove the remote control that's right there? And then if you can put it down on the, the camera down on the stabilizer. So I went ahead and made my marks at the halfway point by just folding it in half. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a center line and I'm going to measure out from there so it makes it easier. So I have a 24 inch ruler here. And here's my center line. And I'm crooked. Dang, just right off the bat. Look at that. So now I'm going to redo that center line. <laughs> Now the original instructions um, from Sulky were that you draw out your complete grid and that's absolutely crazy. Um, you really don't need to do that. You need to do about five lines either way. So you get a kind of a benchmark and then you can um, line it up on your machine and I'll show you how to do that. So if this is my center of my stabilizer, I'm gonna come out um, let me get my measurements here. Okay, the page that we're working off is the, the one that says shawl of thread. We're not working off of the long arm. You need to pull it closer to the camera because oh, okay. I can't come to you. So this one that says shawl of thread on it. You guys, I don't know. Yeah, that's good enough. Okay, yes. so. And the first uh, correction, well, we won't worry about that. We're going to go um, 40. No. no, see, I didn't write down the right. 24 and 18 is 12, 30, 42. 42 inches. We're going to go 42 inches either way. See, I thought I was ready. So 24 inches is going to take me to here. 
And then I'm going to add another 18 to get to the end for my body of my shawl, okay? It's not right either. Well, it's because your first measurement from the center line isn't 42 inches away from the center line. No, I'm not measure. I'm only measuring from here. Right. 42 inches out, that was the first number you asked. Right. 24 and 18 is 42. Right. That's not 42 inches. That ruler is not 42 inches. No, it's 24. 24. Oh, and, and then you do so you don't need to add, you just need to. Okay, I get it. But that doesn't leave me an O. Oh, that does, never mind. That's the 84 inches. And my brain is gone. Hold on. 42 is 84 divided in or multiplied by two. So 84, 84 plus four. Okay. And half is 42. That's right. You're working on one half of the shawl. I'm working on one half, right. That's my getting right to read my three to five ish. So I will not be available during those times. It just didn't look like enough room, but I got it. Okay. So Sure, so I'm probably with you about <laughs> 345. Hi, Carrie, how are you? We're getting it together here. So I'm going to measure here, get my line straight on the edge, and go out my 42 inches. There's 24. There's my 18. Hey, Carol. Hello. Hi. Okay. And I'm going to do the same on the other side, and I'm going to get myself a square, okay? So I'm going to bring it here. That should leave four inches at the end, which it does, yay. <laughs> Let me do the other side. I'm gonna go this way, my... Twenty-four plus eighteen. Now you're gonna notice you're gonna have a lot of stabilizer left up the top. You're just gonna cut it away and you're gonna use it for other projects. Cause I had a piece for you, it's pieced with water soluble thread on top. So when you wash it out, your the other thread should just pull out the back thread. Get my 18 in here. Believe me, this is just the hardest part. It gets easy after this. If you can measure. Okay. Our shawl is gonna be 24 inches wide. So get your 24 inches up here. Okay. And then we're going to go straight across. And that's going to be the box that we are going to be doing our free motion in.
try to get it as square as possible, obviously. <laughs> so the idea is that you are drawing on the stabilizer the boundaries to what you're going to be sewing. Correct. So it's kind of like draw between the lines. Sew between the lines. Yes. Yeah. Okay. At the end of each end of the rectangle, you're going to do another one that's four inches wide. And this is your fringe, OK? So give yourself four inches. on either end. And what we're going to do is we're going to write in that box the word fringe. So we know that we're going to sew different in that area. So fringe. And I'm going to do the same at the other end. Which way are you going? I'm trying to get more room for you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, my four inches here. That and then we're ready to start our grid, okay? So the preparation is a little time consuming, but once you get it done, write fringe in there. So we know that what that area is. Okay, so now all we need to do is a half an inch apart do five lines of grid either way, the length ways and the short way, so that we have something to, um, a guide to go in when we get started here. So I'm gonna do my grid a half inch, as I get it lined up here. Give myself a couple of rows. And then I'm going to show you how to set it up on the machine. So just give yourself a few rows there so we have something to gauge it by. Then you can use the markings on your machine in order to um, keep going. Because we're going to just sew straight lines in a grid pattern until we filled in this whole area. Myself here. Be sure not to get into your fringe area. So this is the hardest part of the whole project is getting this square and the grid out on the first um, few rows. Okay. Does Jane, anybody why do we have to put the grid there? I don't understand why we have the grid. The grid is because, um, let me show you. Don't. Here, I'm going to bring it there. If you can see, I'm going to have Dave do a close up of this. Can you see that really clear? Yeah, nice grid. Can you see the grid? Yes, I see it. Yeah, okay. That's what holds everything together and keeps it square. Okay. Okay. So you only need to draw out five lines and then from your machine, you can. 
I'm only going to draw the two because I know what I'm going to do with my machine. But go ahead and give yourself a few lines. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to go over to my machine. I've already pre-wound uh, 10 bobbins or so. We're going to talk about the way to wind the bobbins. Can you even get in close enough with the camera? How are we doing? Can you see, guys? Can anybody see? Yeah. We're still looking around. Okay. When we started, you said you're going to be working down here. Yeah. So um, when I wind my bobbins, I do not let the thread twist off of the spool. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you've seen this demonstration before, but if it, you haven't, what happens is if your thread is on your, on your um, spool holder, okay, and it's running horizontal, what ends up happening is it twists as it comes off. And when it goes onto your bobbin, that twist, one, does not allow you to put as much thread on the bobbin because it's thicker. And two, when it goes into your project, it will fray eventually with the needle because the thread is just too thick. So I do, I'm a purist when it comes to doing my bobbins. I put my thread um, on the spool holder like this. I let the thread come off flat and directly onto my bobbin winder. And I just pinch it a little bit and give myself my own tension. I don't put it through the tension discs here. The, and another reason why I do that is because when the thread gets low enough on the spool, it starts to actually rub on the spool, on the end of the spool cap and they're not smooth and it will damage the thread. But in, in addition to that, once it gets low enough, it'll start actually pulling the spool off. It, the thread cannot get over the hump and then get into this tension area, doesn't have enough room. And so it actually pulls the spool off and that's basically wasted thread unless you're gonna uh, wind your bobbins with it coming straight out like this. So I've got 10 bobbins wound here and the next thing that we're going to work on is I'm going to show you on a whiteboard because just in case the instructions aren't really clear. But your instructions have your rectangle and then your fringe areas here at the end. Okay, and the way we have it is, I think this is A, B, C, D, is that the way I have it? This is C. Go A, B, C, D, right across. Right, no, A, no, you're right. Why won't this come off? You're probably writing with a <laughs> Sharpie instead of a... <laughs> Well, I'm writing with a Sharpie instead of a, here, this is a, I was thinking, boy, this is really nice. B, C, and D. Okay, we're gonna start, actually, we're gonna start at B. We're gonna sew a line out to A. This is the fringe area here. We're gonna go back over that line of sewing, directly over it, and then all the way down the end to C to D, come back right over your same, and then you're gonna come down here, which is uh, C, D, this is C, F, G, H. G, H, okay. So you're gonna come down to F, you're gonna go out to E, backtrack over that stitch line, come all the way up to H, backtrack, backtrack and go up, here back to A. No, back to B. Back to B. <laughs> back to A, I'll tell you. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to stitch down maybe just a couple of stitches and we're going to come out and go back over our line and we're going to keep doing this until we get all of our friends in. 
And you have to make sure you come and hit this line every time or your fringe will not attach to your Bless you. Bless you. So, bless you. so this is the beginning of your project and I'm gonna go ahead and do that on this stabilizer right now. And then I'm gonna figure out how to get the Sharpie stuff off. Give me the, give me the See, if you write over what you've written with Sharpie with the um, white marker board, it should erase. Usually they do. Oh, good. Right. So okay. if you go over your same lines, it, then it should erase usually. Let's test your theory. Yeah, well, no. No. Well, kind of, yeah. There's some type of alcohol is in there that. All right. Well, okay, we have alcohol. We can do it. Okay, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to do the first set so you can see how it goes. And this is where it gets, you know, repetitious. So I'm going to go ahead and mark my stabilizer with the. Oh, you just took the Sharpie, eh? <laughs> C, D, E. Yes, I know, sweetheart, but I have to. E, F. G and H, okay. can't hear you anymore. That's the volume. Gee, we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay. I'm going to put my thread director on because I don't want my thread to twist when it goes through the... You're gonna use either a 9014 top stitch or 116. In your package, I put 116 top stitch needle in there for you. Gee, can I ask a question? Of course. Um, so if I understood the instructions, the 30 weights going in our bobbin and the 12 weight is going through our needle, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. The reason why there's two different weights is because if you wound 12 weight onto the bobbins, you'd be changing them every few minutes because it's really thick thread. And there's no use to have to buy 15 spools of thread to do in the bobbin. It, it's the same color. There's not gonna be any pull up. And you're not gonna notice any pull up and it's gonna look beautiful. So that's why Sulky does it that way. Let me get my... Uh, thread here. Okay, I am using my seam gate or my seam allowance gauge here to measure my half inch grid. And then I'm going to put my needle down through the hole. And I'm going to look on my machine and see what marking on my machine is closest to that half inch just to see that. Now, I did this out of order. I shouldn't have showed you that right now because we're not going to be using this, but just to let you know, this is how we're going to do it and put tape there so you can see through your stabilizer. I jumped ahead. I apologize. Okay, starting. I have a question. Uh-huh. That great big cone that, that we got in the mail, is that supposed to fit on the thread director? No, you're not going to be, you're going to have to put it on a thread stand or next to your machine. Okay, is it going to twist? Uh, it is going to twist, but the, the distance 
that the thread is going, if it's on a thread stand, it's going from here all the way over to your machine. The twist is not gonna build up significantly for this project, okay? Okay, all right. I, they, I got the big cones for you when I could because it saves you a lot of, um, basically a big cone is the same price as four spools of thread and you're getting twice as much. So I figured why not give you twice as much? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do my first stitch line. And it's actually gonna be the fringe. So let me get all the stabilizer through here. It's gonna bunch up here on the side. Okay, and I'm gonna start at B. This is where good eyesight comes in handy. Bring up our thread. If we can. There we go. I'm going to do the, if your machine does this with the needle down position, I'm going to go ahead and do that. But when you stop, your stabilizer doesn't slip. I'm going to sew my first thing. My stitch length is 2.5. I'm going to stitch all the way out to that outer line where the A is. I'm going to stop. I'm going to turn around and stitch over that same stitch line. And that's how the fringe gets locked into place. Do we drop the feed dogs for this or not? No, you do not drop the feed dogs. This is straight stitching. We're just gonna turn the stabilizer and we're gonna stitch over that same line of stitching. And I'll show it to you when I get it. But you have to kind of be cognizant of the fact that you're stitching right over your first line and it makes your fringe nice and thicker. Make sure you make it all the way to the fringe line or a stitch over. And now we're going to go all the way down the border of the um, of the shawl. Finding a way to manage your stabilizer is probably pretty good. <laughs> now, if you have a long arm, this works really fast because your long arm will lock into place. And there's instructions there for a long arm on the very first pages, if you choose to do it that way. The nice thing about this project is it's very forgiving as long as every stitch is locked into another stitch. I'm hoping this thread kind of shows up, but maybe not. I got a pretty good close up. You got a yeah, good close up of it? Okay. okay. We're approaching the halfway point here. <laughs> We've also given you instructions for four different sizes, the long arm, the shawl, and two different scarves, one kind of like a winter scarf and one like a fashion scarf. Okay, we're approaching the other end. The 
The reason why we're using this stabilizer is if you use the kind of stabilizer that's like fabric, when you go to um, quilt it or do your free motion work, it will just suck it up um, and pucker and you cannot get it to lay flat. Okay, we're getting to this uh, letter C direction here. We're going to go right past the C to the D, which is the fringe area. Eighty degrees, and we're going to go back to the sea to make that first piece of fringe. Okay, now I'm going to turn down that from C, I'm going to go 90 degrees down to F. But there's my fringe right there on the first piece. So fast, it's vibrating. Let's go down just a little bit. Okay, we're going to turn at F. We're going to go to E over in the corner, and that's our another piece of fringe. I lost my uh, spotter here. All the way to the line there. We're going to turn around, do the 180, and come back down that line. And we're going to go straight down the other edge of the shawl. Now, if you're going to be buying stabilizer to do this, this is ultra solvy. This is not um, the thin stuff. This is the thickest stuff that's on the market. And the reason why we use it is because it's meant to withstand a lot of um, stitches without ripping out. Am I making myself clear so far? Yes. Yes. So obviously the bigger throat machine you have, the easier this is going to be, but you can roll it. Like you would a quilt. Oh. 
halfway. Did Jeff make it? Oh. Oh. Jeff, are you here? Okay, I'm worried because his, his parents aren't doing well. So. Okay, we're approaching um, G. And we're going to go right out to H so we can get that first row of fringe. stitch there. Okay, good. Back over that stitch line again, back to G, and then we're going to work our way back up to B. back up to where we started and then we'll do all of our fringe next. Now we only have one week between class, these first two classes because of my uh, little stint in the hospital there. So I'm hoping that, <laughs> excuse me? I said, don't worry about it. Okay. I was gonna say, I'm hoping that we can get all of our uh, outlining and our fringe done by next Sunday. Okay. It should go pretty fast. Get these clipped here. I know we're using variegated, variegated thread, but uh -huh. could, you use, could you use a different color for this outline and for the... Uh, what do you call it? The fringe? No, the, the grid. The grid, you thank you. Any color combination you want. Oh, okay. The, the thread that's on the outline is going to be covered in the oh. end. Uh, but the grid, you can do you can do any combination you want. Just make sure that you use the right weight thread. Okay. Okay. I've made it back up to B. I'm gonna turn around and stitch a couple of stitches back down that line we just stitched. And then I'm gonna do my second piece of, uh, whoa. Do a few um, things of fringe to show you how it works. I'm going to stitch back down that line like three, two or three stitches. One, two, let's do three. Okay. I'm going to turn and I'm going to make, now I'm just going to be making fringe, but this is, let's see. 
the best way to turn this. Can I get you to? I'm going to use the first stitching line as my guide and I'm just going to stitch down right next to it and I just cut my thread that don't do that <laughs> that's not that's a no-no <laughs> don't pull I'm going to say two stitches at 2.5 should get you My eyes are no good anymore. Go right to the stitch or the end of the fringe line there and turn it back. You rolling? Yeah. Okay, he's rolling it up for me here so that it's not so hard to deal with. And then he got tired of doing it. <laughs> it's, it's not easy to roll. Okay. I'm going to stitch back over that line of stitching. Gonna go two stitches down and I'm gonna keep doing this over and over again until I have all my fringe in. No, I didn't make it all the way. It's important that we hit that vertical line or that horizontal line or whatever that line is <laughs> so that the fringe won't separate from the shawl when we're done. So just go two stitches and then go back down. And I'm going to keep doing this until I fill in all of the fringe area. Probably if you have an extension table on your machine, that would be really nice. Mine's in storage. <laughs> Down my two stitches again and do another line fringe. So you get the general idea, right? Mm -hmm. So you're doing those stitches like a quarter inch apart or so? Not even. Yeah, about an eighth of an inch apart. It's okay. What did I just do? Oh. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. The eraser. Okay. This is, as I said, it's a very forgiving project because once the stabilizer is rinsed out, if you made a mistake, nobody's going to know. And we keep doing that. Does anybody have any questions so far? No. Okay. 
Do we think we could get this done by next Sunday? The fringe part? Yeah, do you want the whole grid part done? No, not the grid, the fringe. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's just going back and forth. Looks like you get my two stitches in there. I got my, um, as you ladies know, I have the tremor thing going on and my foot's going on the pedal like. <laughs> I'll have to get down here twice. That's good. <laughs> Give myself a couple of stitches here to get to my next piece of fringe. My pedal is going to wait for me. I used to have one of those pedal things that um, prevented your pedal from moving around and I don't know what happened to it. I like this color. That thing must have cleaned up and put it away somewhere. Pardon? I said that thing must have cleaned up and put it away somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Now, I haven't seen it since we've been here, actually. Um, so it's in with our booth someplace. Probably in Dave's demo box. Now, if it's humid where you are, which probably not this time of year, but if you're having rain, uh, make sure that when you're not working on your project to put it in a Ziploc bag so that the moisture doesn't uh, do something to the stabilizer because it's water soluble. I'll get a couple more pieces of fringe in here. But that's pretty much it for the first part. The second part, we're going to actually do the, um, if you want to start on it too, the grid portion. And what I do is I just figure out what mark on my machine gives you the half inch. And um, I use that as my line to go down and put my grid in. I don't know how good a picture you're getting there. It's doing good. Okay. Okay, so there's the, that's what the fringe starts to look like after you build it up. And then we do it at both ends. Okay. And then we'll start on our grid. How far apart did you did do those? It, it looks like it's further apart than I would have thought. Um, it's about an eighth of an inch. And if you'll hand me the the sample right there, honey. When you when the fringe is washed out. These are about an eighth of an inch apart, I guess. Let's see if they can. See, it kind of gets thicker. And that's, you can put them as close as you want. You just don't want to get one over another one or then it's just going to be solid thread. It's not going to be um, fringe because these are all individual lines. So when you're finished all that straight stitching on the fringe, you finished the fringe. There's no yeah. more stitch on it. What's the question? When you finish the straight stitching on that fringe, that's it. You don't do any more stitching on it. That's it. On the fringe? Yeah, that's that's all you that's do it. is 
Okay. Uh, then we're going to do the grid next. Okay. And the grid is one half inch. So there's the fringe. See on this sample or this finished product, I can't find the other end of the fringe. They probably can't hear you. No, we can hear them. Oh, you can hear him. Okay. Uh, he was talking yes. really well and I could barely hear him. Okay, now show them your fringe here. And here's the beauty again, you, you've said this several times, but it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, it's not all exactly equilateral. And the key here is that the distance where the fringe is important is up by the baseline. Because as she sews out, she's the distances are changing. But down at the baseline, if the distances are fairly consistent, you end up with what I just showed you in the finished project. Yeah, I have the, the I have the fringe two stitches and apart. We can't get close enough to see it. Okay, but I only went two stitches over and started the next piece of fringe. Okay, all right. I guess I was looking at the other end, and it looked like they were really far apart. But that's the end that's going to be washed out. So it doesn't matter how far apart they're stitched anyhow. No, because it's no. going to be very fluffy. Right. right. Okay. So then um, I'm going to show you the first, I'm going to go over here and do the first grid thing so you can see what I'm talking about. I measured out, uh, let me get my foot down. On my machine, a half of an inch is a marking right here on my machine. So I can follow that mark all the way down from one stitch line to the other, if that makes any sense. I'm gonna run this, my first stitch line along my half inch mark on my plate so that this will be exactly a half an inch from it. I'm gonna come back one stitch. Okay. Does it matter if you go lengthwise or widthwise? Nope. You can do it either way. You can interchange it if you want, just as long as you're crossing over your line so that everything will stay together. But the correct way is to go width first. Length first. What? Mm -hmm. I'm joking. Well, <laughs> don't do that. You just said it doesn't matter. Right, but, but you, but then you go, but the correct way is, he's a pain in the butt, let me tell you. Okay, so I'm using that mark on my machine to keep my stitching even. And when I marked it here, I was off. So I'm better off sticking with my grid, staying a half an inch away from my previous line. And this stuff is pretty slippery, so. Now you don't have to retrack on that line, do you? Nope, it's just one stitch line. And okay. then we're gonna come back and go the other direction. Okay, that's what I thought, okay. Now the only thing we backtrack is the fringe. Okay. I have a question with the us moving from one fringe to the next fringe is it better to stitch a, back across the shawl again or to cut our thread and move down to the other side the least amount of cutting is the better the better yes so you okay. can come back along that line because at the end we're going to be zigzagging over all of that um to keep to give us a nice firm border and everything will be attached okay after we quilt it we'll call it quilted after we do our free motion work i should say but we're ba basically from free motion quilting see i got off there a little bit but In the end, it's really not going to matter. Because you're going to have to look really hard to see that grid in that shawl. 
Now, is there a particular foot you're using? A particular kind of foot? I'm using the general purpose foot that the machine comes with. Um, so it's the it's the machine, it's the foot that they recommend that you use the most for just general purpose sewing. You want to get as much foot over the um, yeah, your your feed dogs. Yeah, your feed dogs. Boy, my brain is just gone. Um, you want to get as much of the foot over the feed dog so it feeds as evenly as possible. So the thicker one, that, but you can see what you're doing because if you have a the center line on there on your foot, then when you're going back over your fringe, you can line that center mark up over the fringe and get it really uh, right on top of it. But so you just keep going, doing your grid. Until you have the whole grid in there. Now, um, I doubt that we're gonna get through the whole grid this week, but at least if we get the fringe done, we can work on the grid next week. And then we'll do the free motion portion. So how does that sound to everybody? Sounds good. Do you have any more questions? Nope. 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 Well, um, I'm gonna go ahead and keep working on this, um, but- uh, G, G, I have a question. Do you have any more kits available? I can get kits available. Um, it, it's it's going to take me at least a week to do that only because of the shipping situation. That, um, that's no problem. Um, I thought for sure I'd, I'd order a kit and then when it didn't come and I went and looked, I couldn't find an invoice. So obviously it's one of those things I put in my in the, in the card and then never finished. So um, I would like a kit. Um, but at your convenience, it's not something I'm going to work on right now. So that's okay. Sure. Uh, on the website, if you go to um, the kits area, okay, give me about 50, give me a half an hour or so. I think yeah. the shawl of thread kit is in there, but you can, there's like five different color ways that you can choose from. Okay. I'll go on the thing and, and order the kit right there. But like I said, there, there's no, don't worry about you know the ship when it ships and stuff like that because I'm not going to be able to work on it for a little while. Okay, great. Um, just in the if you can't find it, just in the search area, put shawl uh -huh. of thread kit yeah. with a little eyeglass. The search eyeglass shawl of thread kit and it'll come yeah. directly to that page. Okay, great. Thank you very much. I like I You're said, welcome. it was one of my senior moments. Did uh, anybody, oh, um, what I was gonna tell you is when you, after you've dr drawn your grid out, you're gonna have an excess of like five or six inches of stabilizer. Go ahead and leave an inch above, above your grid and cut that stabilizer off so you don't have to work with as much stabilizer, but save it because you will be able to use it for a lot of different things. Um, you can make starch out of it, you can make decoupage material out of it or the like the terial magic stuff that makes your fabric really really stiff um, all you have to do is add water to it or some small free motion projects that we're going to be doing later you can use that stabilizer so hang on to it keep it in a, a baggie and then when you need it you'll have it instead of having to purchase some so um, the other thing is when we get to the free motion portion we're gonna be doing um, circles. And as long as your circles extend, uh, attach to another circle or the grid, when you wash it out, everything is gonna be just fine. If it's not attached, it's just gonna be hanging there. You can go back and fix those things if that becomes uh, an issue. Show them what you mean by attached to each other down there. Oh, okay. Let's pretend like this is my grid here. When I do my free motion, I'm going to do it attaching all these threads together or maybe a corner and attaching these threads together. 
we're going to do maybe some small ones, but we're going to always attach it to another circle or to the grid. And that's what keeps it all together. The other thing on the list of items you're going to need, I forgot to tell you, you're going to need hair conditioner for the last part. Because need what? Hair conditioner. Hair conditioner. Shampoo and hair conditioner. But, but no shampoo. Just the hair conditioner. When you go to rinse out your stabilizer, the way to get your shawl really soft and get all the stabilizer out is to put a few drops of hair conditioner in the water and it will pull out all of the stabilizer and actually make your shawl really soft. So if you don't use hair conditioner, get a little bottle of it or something. But you'll need that when you're washing out your shawl or else it'll be stiff. And I think that's the only other thing you need. Um, you're probably not going to be able to do it all in one needle, uh, but if you have 9014 needles at home or 116, then that's good. If you don't, they are for sale. They're on sale on the website. So you can just put in top stitch needle and it'll come up. Any other questions? G? Yep. You know that blue bag? This is Carol. Oh, yes. I couldn't order it. Everything said sold out. I have, Carol, I have a kit right here. Hold on. Yeah, the one I liked. I know, wait. <laughs> I'm going to look for that material that you liked. Unfortunately, somebody got in there before you did. But remember the bag that I showed you, this material here? Yes. I have a complete kit of that. Would you like that? That's what I would like, yes. Good. Okay. I would love that. Okay, then. If you will, I will go ahead and put it up on the, uh, this is Carol Reichek, right? Yes. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do the order for you and email it to you and then you can just complete it. Okay, that's super. Okay, Thanks. I will package it up for you and you'll have all the stabilizer, all the zippers and the um, pattern and everything, all the hardware will come in there. So just like okay. the other kit. Yeah, okay. thank you. Was there any other questions? No, you did good. Well, thank you. I got the shakes really bad and I'm really sorry about that. I probably, the doctor gave me some medication to, you know, kind of get away from that, but it makes me go to sleep. So, you know, I'd be like here on the machine. And <laughs> I'm between a lot of hard lights. Can you add into that the fact that she really doesn't follow instructions very well, including yeah. doctors, medical professionals, and it's a challenge. Now, I'm following the medical professionals thing. How many, the pill you're talking about, how many- They say I can take day? four a day, but if I can't sleep all day. Sure you could, you get better faster. But I have things I have to do, you know. This is our squabble, this, this isn't your guy's squabble. <laughs> <laughs> I just I wanted to- feeling. Yeah, it's a slow process. Marco told me it was going to take time. So, you know. <laughs> All right. Say goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Okay, let me take care of this.